2020 has been a year of loss and conflict, but I hope it'll end with renewal and revival. So I live in Brooklyn where two iconic bridges meet and tourists love to visit. It's actually one of the most Instagram spots in the world. But this year, the streets of my neighborhood have been ravaged by coronavirus and anguish. The sirens of death, despair, anger, and pain have not stopped ringing in New York City since March. America is burning right outside my front door, and we are burning with pain, the pain of inequality, oppression, racial injustice in America, but also the rest of the world. I had barely recovered from coronavirus in April when I was diagnosed with kidney stones. Now, doctors will tell you that renal colic pain caused by stones is second only to childbirth, and the process of removing these stones is still borderline barbaric. During the months of May and June, the country went into another spasm of anguish from 400 years of subjugation of black people. Protests were raging on the streets, police cars were set on fire, Young men and women were brutalized by cops, and I entered a cycle of pain that resulted in my being rushed to hospital. The emergency room was a gridlock of agony. There was a young black man in a Black Lives Matter t-shirt on a gurney opposite mine. His forehead had burst open like a pomegranate, and he was howling for morphine as cops were scrolling through their iPhones. Sedated on heavy doses of codeine, with the perpetual ache of a stent in my kidney, I was in a delirium for four weeks of June. The pain was excruciating, and my nurse, Miss Kim, was my savior. Drawing blood every six hours, shooting thinner into my veins, and sliding my body through the scanner before the cystoscopy. The stones sparkled like evil diamonds, the radiologist said. In the blue opioid haze of the recovery room, I had visions of mutilated genitalia of black female slaves upon whom J. Marion Sims, the so-called father of gynecology, had performed surgeries without anesthesia. He claimed that blacks did not feel pain, so he gave anesthesia only to his white female patients, but not to the black slaves that he had purchased to perform experiments upon. I came home after the procedure, the stent burning indignantly like a cross inside me. Outside, the virus of hate was corroding the soul of the country. Another black man, Rayshard Brooks, was murdered in Atlanta by white cops. I thought it was a bad dream, but the rottenness of the racial divide was on full display. Our president, its ugliest manifestation. It's been said that this summer, people are having visions and hallucinations, and I think it's true. My mind was warped by harsh reality and pain medication. I've had recurring visions of Emmett Till and what hate did to that beautiful little boy. I've been in the murky river with him, with a huge metal fan around my head. I've been haunted by the ghosts of his torment and felt that a barbed wire was being pulled through my ureter shredding my bladder. Sometimes in the middle of the night, I've been woken up by cops kicking me in my kidneys, dragging me away, throwing my painkillers in the gutter. In my nightmares, I've been a refugee woman aborting on a boat lost at sea. I've imagined Elijah McLean playing violin to kittens while in the chokehold of white supremacy. A few times, I've dreamt of my sweet aunt who died a long, long time ago. She suffered from macrocephaly and goiter and was treated with cruelty and mocked by her own mother all her life. You know, it seems like a calcium oxalate stone forms inside me every 20 years. Perhaps it's a metaphor for something else a hardening and manifestation of misdeeds or toxic things I've imbibed that I must atone for and wash away. The extraction of this foreign object is a painful but necessary process for my rebirth and renewal, an ayahuasca of the body and soul. 
So on June 29th, my doctor shot a syringe full of lidocaine into me as a nurse held me down and he pulled the stent out of my body. I blacked out for a while, but was finally free of pain. Perhaps hundreds of years of transgressions have calcified into stones that are blocking America's bloodstream, causing torment, pain, and necrosis. We've never really acknowledged our genocidal past or the horrors of slavery. Unlike other nations with histories of oppression, we haven't cleansed ourselves of racial injustice and inequality. We carry within us this terrible karma of cruel foreign policies, the murder of millions of innocents, and our disdain for the world and the environment. And it's all choked up inside us like blood clots in the arteries. We will not heal unless these stones are removed. Their extraction is painful, but vital for our country to regain its health. So I'm free of pain now when I can walk and even run in the wounded light of my rabbit city. I feel so grateful to be alive. And I'm optimistic that this November, America too, will remove a stone from its body.